Hello, I'm Femi O'K and you're watching Inside Africa from the Lesedi Cultural Village just outside of Johannesburg. Hello, Baba. Sabona. Nice to meet you. You'll be seeing, thank you so much, you'll be seeing more of this great man later in the program. Come this way. Hello, gentlemen. <laughs> Today, we're going to take you on a tour around some of the tourist destinations in the African continent as we explore travel and its latest trends in Africa. Now the global rate of tourism in Africa has grown twice as much as any other region around the world and here in South Africa well it's one of the top five worldwide tourist destinations. But we're going to start in Angola, a country that has beautiful beaches and wildlife, a rich culture and heritage as well but because of the civil war virtually no tourism. But that's something the government is working on. Check out the bustling beaches, the gorgeous scenery, and colorful culture. It looks like a prime tourist destination. This is Angola, formerly known as war-torn Angola. It's looking a little different nowadays. Just five years after the end of its 27-year civil war, the country is trying to entice visitors. Former presidential candidate Eduardo Chinguji has channeled his passion for Angola into selling it. We are a country that is blessed with uh, natural beauty. We have, you know, perhaps one of the longest uh, coasts in Africa with wonderful beaches. This is the place where people can do things like scuba dive. This is the place people can come for, for, for the sun. At the weekend in Luanda, the place to be seen is Miami Beach. But don't pack your swimsuit quite yet. We can not really talk uh, about traditional tourism coming from abroad. If we don't have the, the infrastructure, it means the good roads, we don't have uh, a, a good health system, we don't have uh, a good quality uh, uh, portable water, and electricity 24 by 24. While building work is frenetic, the government actually goes out of its way to discourage tourists from visiting. Getting a visa is difficult and there's a chronic shortage of hotel rooms. For tourists who want to come here, we, we have to be realistic. We, I, I do not right now need to have a million tourists coming here in Angola. At Miami Beach, the visitors are usually local or here for business, like Wayne who's in Luanda on oil business and at the beach for a team meeting. There's certainly lots of things to do here. I mean, here we are sitting on a beautiful beach, uh, you know, uh, in the afternoon, Sunday, enjoying, enjoying our day. Across the city, there's a reminder of how much work remains to be done. No cocktails at sunset for the residents of the Terra Nova slum. It's this side of Angola that bothers economist Dr. Justino. Tourism investment will take time. It will take a long time, I can promise you. Because when you want to attract a tourist to your country, you have to create decent conditions for your own people first. If all goes to plan, Angola's tourism industry will be open for business just in time to host the Africa Nations Cup football tournament in 2010. Some holiday destinations are already thriving, like Kenya's popular Masai Mara National Reserve. But the park's reputation for being a top holiday spot could be the very thing that ruins the beauty that once made it famous. Mary Laura reports. The Masai Mara, with its roaming wildlife, is one of Kenya's prime tourist destinations. Last year, a U.S. television show voted the park the seventh new wonder of the world an honor pegged to the annual migration of more than 1.5 million wildebeest and zebra that plod from the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania into Kenya's Masai Mara during the dry season. The publicity is resulting in a new surge of interest in the reserve. We have had a lot more inquiries from the trade outside there, the wholesalers, the tour operators out there, and the clients as well. The park opens its doors to some 300,000 visitors each year. And those who have already experienced the Mara agree it deserves all the attention. It's something that many people may not know about, which they should because it's absolutely breathtaking. You're in an area that's conserved and not this virgin land, I suppose. It's never changed. But it's precisely this natural beauty that could be at risk. Officials at the reserve are concerned 
that the growing number of tourists could endanger the Mara's delicate ecosystem. Some of the impacts associated with tourism in the Mara are issues related to animal harassment, the driving of the road, which results in vegetation destruction. It's a difficult dilemma. Tourism is the fastest growing sector in Kenya's economy and is directly or indirectly responsible for creating about half a million jobs. And for the Maasai community which lives in the reserve, tourism often provides the only income. The small income we get from them, we can use for buying school uniform and also some school equipment like books. Several investors have already approached the reserve with offers to build more lodges and facilities. But Kenya's tourism authorities say the way forward is not to increase the number of tourists, but the standing of the Mara. Up the service, up the quality of the product, and improve the environment, and charge a little bit more. Let Mara be an exotic destination for those that can afford it. A study is underway to determine how much more can be built without diminishing the reserve's natural beauty and damaging the ecology. In the meantime, a moratorium has been placed on any new development to ensure that the Mara's original inhabitants remain a priority, the same inhabitants that are the core of the lure and the magic of the park. Marie Laura for CNN, Masai Mara National Reserve, Kenya. Safaris are becoming one of the most profitable tourist activities in Africa. In recent years, the industry has turned into a multi-million dollar business. The majority of those heading on safaris are European, followed closely by Americans and Asians. Big game safaris are the most popular, but speciality safaris are also emerging. Bird safaris are, for example, popular here in South Africa, which is home to almost 800 of the nearly 1,000 bird species found on the subcontinent. Coming up on Inside Africa, it's exotic and mysterious, but to some prospective tourists, perhaps a little bit too mysterious. We head to Libya after the break to find out what the country has to offer and how it's trying to change its image. Stay with us. Africa's tourist attractions include everything from wildlife to natural beauty, ancient ruins and culture. In East Africa, the plains of the Serengeti stretch over both Kenya and Tanzania, boasting the largest migration of animals in the world twice each year. Next door in Uganda, chimpanzees and gorillas offer some of the best primate viewing in the world. To the west, there's Mali with its culturally rich heritage and beautiful cliffside villages. In Zambia, Victoria Falls, which is said to be the largest sheet of falling water in the world. And to the south in Botswana has the Okavango Delta as a labyrinth of lagoons, lakes and hidden canals. Home to lions, cheetahs, leopards, elephants and rhinos.